Hey guys, welcome back. So today is a really exciting day. We're gonna start the air to water intercooler. Uh, so what it is, a brief description, is this Mach 1 or 99 Cobra, basically the 464 valve NA cars had that intake manifold um, or one like it. But so it goes on a four valve car. But what we're gonna do is adapt that to a custom air to water intercooler that I'm making for the turbo setup so that I can use a Holly high ram on the top. So that should be pretty awesome. Make for some really good flow, some really good cooling capabilities. And so today we're gonna start that. This is what we have. So this is kind of what I, what I mocked up. Uh, the bottom shape here, uh, if you guys can see that, the, the bottom shape here is the lower manifold that's on the car. Uh, measured all that, cut it out. This brick in the middle here, is basically the intercooler core that's coming tomorrow. So what we have to do tonight is make this spacer section here, because that's the lift off the deck of the manifold that's on the car. Um, we're gonna get some clearance off of the runners that are on there, the ones that uh, I polished up, and actually increase the punnum volume slightly uh, inside the uh, intake. So be able to hold more boost and We'll see how it goes. Quantum volume can't really be that bad of a thing for a boost application because it all just gets shoved in at the end of the day. I don't think it's that difficult. I've never done this before. I've done quite a bit of research on it. Um, but you know, let's, let's see what happens because I got a core coming and we need to get this stuff welded up. So we go in the car, make some boost. So materials I have right now. So this isn't materials. Uh, we've got this plate here. This is 3 8 thick. Uh, and I have the shape all drawn out for what the um, lower plenum will accept. So this is the shape of the lower plenum. It is similar to what you would see on like a Mach 1 intake spacer. Um, they're like 120 bucks. Um, I couldn't, I could take, I could technically take a bunch of those spacers, stack them up together, weld them and create this whole thing. But the problem still becomes I need to take this shape, this weird forward shape that they have and turn it into this rectangle because this rectangle represents the bottom of the intercooler brick that's coming, the air to water uh, core. So we need to take this shape and be able to put the core on here so that we can make those welds and seal up these gaps. Now what you see here where this X is, uh, here, here, these little gaps all along the edge that are on the very outside of that rectangle, that's what I'm gonna have to plate off here. So this, basically a plate. So it'll be uh, sheet metal, uh, aluminum, that'll go there. That's what that is. And basically that will take up the space that the rectangle can't. Because the rectangle is a rectangle, the rectangle is not this weird forward shape. So that's gonna basically fill that in and be able to hold the pressure. So real quick, what I wanna do first is this is a large piece to be working with. Uh, sorry if it's loud, I have headphones on so I can barely hear myself. Um, what I wanna do is take this bit, I raised it up so it's higher now than the deck. You can see it right there tire so it'll cut all the way through the thickness of this 3 8 what I want to do is kind of just cut off this large section here um, so that I don't need to be moving this around when I'm trying to manipulate this to get it cut so I'm gonna trim this off and hopefully that will make this easier to uh, manipulate and cut and get accurate all right so update number one I found out the hard way that the other way I was doing it was just destroying the bit. Um, someone's probably laughing at me right now. That's fine. So basically the uh, zoom in, basically there's supposed to be a bit in that slot there. There's one there. You can see it shimmer. There's not one there. So that whole ridge is messed up. It's just, I don't know where that went. So that one's trash. Uh, threw in a 3 8 bit. Mainly because this is 3 8 uh, thick. So should be easier to hold up. It's a little bit thicker, it's a little bit stronger. So do that one in there. I'm just gonna go at it slowly. After about an hour of slowly cutting away at this, level by level by level, um, I was able to preserve the bit, it didn't break, and we got our first shape out of this. So now we're not dealing with that anymore, we just have this section here. This is basically what the spacer will be. 3 8 thick so I'm gonna get some of these quick edges off I'm gonna try to figure out a plan for the middle because um, all of that all this space here um, it's gonna be cut out because Harry's gonna go through it um, I just need to replicate the 
the pattern around it. I'll cut like a big section out here, uh, as big as I can without really touching the ed the inside edges, just so just to be safe, because I can always go back and do that um, each section at a time and just do a pass and not really mess it up that way. So just a quick update on a little of the issues I just ran into real quick. So if you see here, it's all messy. What had happened was since aluminum is so soft when it gets hot, and this is why you have to use cooling fluid um, or cutting fluid, but it's mainly there to cool and lubricate. Uh, is when the aluminum gets hot, since it's such a soft metal, it kind of likes to bunch up. And what it did was it bunched up on the blade down here and it was like a little ball of aluminum. And if that's bunched up, that means that that blade isn't cutting anymore. So I only had one side cutting, figured out that the aluminum was starting to bunch up on the bit. So had to stop, clean it off, uh, add more uh, PV blaster, which I'm using as cutting fluid, um, just cause it's an oily cooling liquid. So that's really all you need. There's specific cutting fluids that I could probably be using, but it's five bucks, I've done it a million times. Uh, PB Blaster works perfect for cutting fluid. WD-40 is the same thing. Um, they work great. So back for day two, I took a break last night from the milling on the spacer. It took quite a while, there's quite a few passes I had to do, and so that was kind of part one. Um, so today we'll try to get a little further. All right guys, so next step for me was I had this main section cut out. Uh, this is gonna have to get cut out. This is gonna have to get cut out all the way to this line. Um, Actually, not all the way along. 10, 10 millimeters inside the line at all points. Basically, what that is, is I just outlined my shape here. Uh, right, line it up there. Yeah. So I just took this shape, outlined it, and so all these outside sections here, one here, a little bit of stuff here, a bunch up here. I'm just gonna try to take that as low-hanging fruit and get all that stuff off first um, so I'll get a true outside shape and then I can work on the inside shape and I can just move it in slowly uh, move the cutting bit in slowly until I can reach the shape that I want there and that should give me the most accurate results so we're pretty close now um, it's a little big there uh, probably like that everywhere that's besides the one and the two right there those are my guides that's what I'm using to make sure that I'm actually keeping the same shape as I cut. Um, but yeah, everything's pretty much trimmed up as much as I could. I kind of got close there, but just barely got it. Um, so I'm happy with that. It's not going to stay like that. That's not what I mean. For now, that's good. What I'm going to do is get the outside where these little, where basically this flat uh, flush surface and this flush surface. I'm going to take it to the welder, have them tack it like run a little bit of a bead there, bead there, just so this thing doesn't move out of its position. Then what I can do is I can go back with all of this on the table and cut out very, very precisely where it ends. And then I'll have a perfect match. This is really a good start though. So this is three eighths, this is quarter inch. It's gonna be five eighths overall. Um, that's right, yeah. Yeah, I think I did that math right. We were using metric wouldn't have this problem that's a different story though so here is what it's all for it's for the air to water intercooler core um water goes through here all these little jackets air goes down here into the engine so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to take this i think it should be even though it's not perfect i think it should still fit um i'm going to mock it up 
so we can see what it should look like on the car. Holy crap, this thing looks so... <laughs> I see it coming together. It might be hard to visualize, but I see it coming together. So we've got our gas, our, our lower manifold here, our gasket. We've got the intake spacer that is basically I'm using as the model. We've got the 3 8 spacer that I made. It's going to be welded to the core here. And then we got this top plate, and that's how the high ram is going to adapt on this. That's what this plate's for. So this plate is for the Ford side. This plate is for the LS Chevy GM side. Um, but dude, it fits in there perfect. It's high. Like I said, I knew it was going to have to cut it. But from here, from the top where my hand is now, the high rim measures 3.5 inches taller. So it'll stick out of the hood 3.5 inches, give or take, because there is some of this structure that um, will take some of that space. So maybe three, three and a quarter. It's going to clear the alternator just fine. No problems there. N not Nothing. And then the turbo is going to come up right here. And then right into the high ram. Yeah, maybe come out a little bit. So all of this center section is going to be chopped. Oh my god, it's exciting. <laughs> so excited. It looks so cool. And I can say that I built it myself. I, I took the time and figured it out. And I mean, stuff isn't rocket science. I'm excited. This looks awesome. So just visualize the high ram sitting up there. It's not going to be that long. I just got more material than I need, so I have extra if I need it. Um, or so I can just trim it down into place. But dude, that looks awesome. That looks so cool. I don't know. I'm kind of speechless at this point. I don't know what to say, but holy crap, dude. That looks awesome like i said I, I can see it coming together i've been planning this for months and it's finally coming together so excited this looks awesome the problem is the high ram i don't know if i said this already I'll tell you guys again uh it's on back order so i'm not gonna get it for three more weeks so i can't make this piece until that piece comes um so that's just gonna sit around i've got my other aluminum here this is using for all the side plates so there's going to be a bit of a water plenum here, or fluid plenum. Um, so it'll be coming out over here, be going in over here, just like all the other ones that you may see. Um, holy crap, that's cool. That's super cool. All right. Well, I'm going to clean up. I'm going to get out of here for the night, make sure uh, I figured out everything I need to. But dude, that looks so cool. I'm so excited. Final product. Have it all cut out, super clean. I'm happy with how it came out. Uh, yeah, so this is cut, that's step one, long step one. And it fits right on top of the other spacer like it needs to. And this basically gives me clearance from these runners that kind of like tuck inside. That's how this intake is set up from Ford. Um, so yeah, this gives me clearance and the intercooler course that's right on top of this that's step one step one is done um next couple of days i'll go and figure out what size plates i want to make that and i have the material here but in this box but um i'll cut that out and then we'll get the bottom figured out and then get that welded and then like i said before the um let's see the lid the holly holly lid it's late i'm super tired uh the holly lid is uh on back order beginning of march i'm thinking i should get that it's middle of february now so two three ish weeks um from there we can start building the top piece and then i can put the sides together and it'll all come together and we'll have an intake so clean up the shop don't see much aluminum on the floor anymore there was a ton over here so we'll uh get that set up and that's step one uh so uh Subscribe, like, share. This is kind of some cool stuff that most people don't show um, how, it, how it goes together. And you guys can kind of plan for your setup something similar. Um, you just use a router table and you, you cut it out and trace it out. And you plate it up, get it welded. So um, I'll show you the next steps when those come along. But 
for now that's step one that's cut out um yeah that's really it for tonight so i did this up get this out for you guys and um thanks for watching so i'll see you later